and then we'll go view advanced still 10 seconds start and we go event start Of course, start out muted. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome back to the uh, 2021 North Carolina Invasive Plant Council annual symposium. Um, and uh, I'm glad to see that uh, we've got a pretty decent showing um, for the business meeting this morning. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I hope everyone has had a chance to, to get a cup of coffee um, and is ready to uh, Talk business. We've got a 45 minute block uh, scheduled for this meeting, and I'm not sure it will take that long, but we've got some um, some stuff to cover. And uh, so, um, yeah, without further ado, we'll, uh, I will go ahead and start sharing my screen and pull up the agenda for the meeting. Great. So, um, as all of you know, uh, this is generally a, a regular business meeting that occurs annually. We haven't had it for a couple of years due to you know COVID and um, uh, our uh, the, it killing our ability to have um, a, a meaningful symposium and 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 organize. And so we're we've got some things to talk about. Um, some some stuff's happened in the last couple of years, and um, and so I hope you all can uh, give it your your focus and attention. Um, we'll be talking about these. Four specific um, items, but but be thinking about things. If, if anyone has any new or other business to bring up, we'll give time for that at the end of the of the meeting. So, um, what I'd like to do first is uh, turn over the floor to our treasurer, Jonathan Short. And Jonathan, I, I you don't need to to um, to pull up the video, or do you need? I guess I should ask. Do you need control? No, I don't have anything prepared. I'm just going to discuss that first point. So, okay, well, great. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to you. And and Jonathan, our treasurer, is going to be discussing our nonprofit status um, and uh, and what we've been doing to try and um, and deal with that. So, take it away, Jonathan. Okay, thanks, Owen. So, <clears throat> uh, currently, we are not in uh, nonprofit status with the IRS. Um, so the long story is the we used to be under the umbrella organization of the Southeastern Exotic Pest Plant Council, and they were <clears throat> all the ch chapters in the southeast. They were, you know, handling the uh, paperwork that needs to be submitted to the IRS. And apparently, uh, you know, something happened where that wasn't occurring. So we. <clears throat> lost our uh, status with the IRS in May of 2015, but we did not learn about this till uh, 2019 late. And also the umbrella organization that we were, um, you know, under, they disbanded in uh, December of 19. So all the Southeastern state chapters then had to become their own um chapters and nonprofits status so so currently what we've done is we've applied with the IRS um, we submitted another application in October of uh, this year and uh, waiting to hear back from them to see if we can get our uh, nonprofit status uh, activated again so hopefully we'll hear something in the next 90 days on that and that's pretty much what the the story is on that so if anybody has any questions whatever you can type it in the chat or q a but that's pretty much what um that's everything on that sure i appreciate that jonathan yeah and I, just a note to the other um members who are in the business meeting now as a board we've We've 
struggle trying to figure out how, how there's, there's sort of a couple options to go for trying to, you know, um, repatriate in the nonprofit world. And, and so it's been a little bit uh, challenging um, for us to navigate. And, but we have had a lot of discussions about it at our board meetings. And we were, you know, cognizant of the fact that, you know, we, although we had lost nonprofit status, we were still allowing for donations. I mean, albeit nominal donations. Um, you know, we, we're not like some powerhouse organization that that generates thousands of dollars a year um, in donations. They they mainly trickle in. But we 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 felt um, in consult with other IPSIs um, and what they've been doing. We felt like uh, it was not. We felt like it was okay to allow those contributions to continue, um, knowing that we were going to make a meaningful effort to reestablish our nonprofit status. And so I just want to be clear about that because there was nothing, it's a genuine effort on our part to try to, to make things right. And, you know, at the same time, as we don't want to be out of compliance, we also needed to um, be able to accept donations to, to keep things running. So um, just wanted to, to clarify on that point. And yes, if anyone has any, any questions, please do. Um, Let's stick them in the chat or the Q and A. I'm sorry. Um, so, all right, Jonathan, thank you for that report on our nonprofit status. Um, we're working towards it, and I, I feel good about it. I think we're we're just a matter of time. So, um, yeah. And and one other thing too is that you know, luckily we've we've had Jonathan for as the treasurer for so long now, and he's been diligent about you know keeping records, and and so all that really has been asked. Um, or will be relied upon is his past financial statements and records. And so he, it, they've been in good hands. And so I think we're, we're in a good spot. Um, <clears throat> let's see, next item that, that we need to discuss um, is planning for this, the next meeting of these that we have. Um, and, and so we, we, we bat this around often, you know, we're a, an organization that is spread out uh, across all the eco regions and, and the geographics, you know, reach of, North Carolina, and so we, you know, we talk about where and we talk about when mainly. And so um, I think the main focus for for the preference on timing it, uh, is to discuss that today and and see if the if the board and the membership that would be attending the next meeting, you know, has a preference as to if we'd have it in the the late summer, or early fall. Um, Normally we have meetings in the spring, but we, we, we felt as a board that it was too close to this meeting to to have one um, this coming spring. And so, um, you know, picking a time allows us to also monitor the way that things are going with uh, COVID and um, feeling out the, the social and environmental landscape. And so if we pick a time now, then we'll be able to angle more towards um, whether or not we can have an in-person meeting or if, or if we have a virtual meeting again. So um, with that, I, I think uh, I might, I think I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now because I, well, no, I can open the Q&A now. Um, I, I would offer you guys the opportunity, uh, those of you here in the meeting, to to kind of put it out there in the Q&A and see if uh, there's a preference for um, timing of this next meeting. Don't be shy. Early fall. Early fall. You've got to vote for early fall. Ah. <laughs> fall. Okay. We're getting some we're getting some fall um consensus here or some votes for it. I mean I agree, you know, um fall gives us a chance to for those of us who are parents or who are involved in schooling, if those of some of us who are teachers, you know, uh late summer can sometimes be a hectic time. Um for, for those of us who have those responsibilities. And so I think early fall 
could could be a little bit easier. You know, at, at the school started and think people are on their feet and have the ability to kind of take a breath and and attend something like this. Agree, George. It's a good time to treat invasive. And, and Sean has made a good point that, you know, later in the fall um, or early in the spring, in the past, we've, we've had issues con contending with snow. Uh, and so that, that, can, um, that can kind of uh, really confound things. Pete, I see your question in there. Um, I, I think, I, think the, I mean, I, my answer is yes. Um, I, obviously, it's not my um, it's not my final decision, but I would love for an in-person meeting. I think that the ones that I've been to in the past have been very meaningful. I mean, that's where I've formed some some really uh, quality and lasting relationships in the in invasive plant and just the you know um, natural resource world. And they're fun. They're uh, an opportunity to kind of kick back and um, hang out with like-minded people, talk about issues. I think a lot of good comes out of them when they're in person. And, and you know, not that this virtual symposium is um, not meaningful, but, you know, being able to, you know, share a, share a beer with a colleague um, and, and just sit and talk face to face um, and just have camaraderie, it's, it means a lot. So I, I think in person is where I would want to lean. And I'd also, um, I welcome any other thoughts on that. I mean, I know, again, we have to kind of watch the, the COVID landscape. Um, but I, I, I really do think the value of an in-person meeting is, is stronger than that of a virtual meeting. The other kind of subtopic um, relative to the 2022 annual meeting is um, we've, we've discussed as a board uh, trying to have another joint North Carolina, South Carolina um, meeting. We did that back in 2018, I think it was 2018. 19. 19. Um, and it was awesome. I mean, it was um, Sean Bloom, our, for, our former or past president, um, he did an excellent job uh, wrangling the um man i mean it was great he had he we, there was like a new hotel being built he got in early you know we had um so we got good rates and it was kind of everything was fresh and clean we had to deal with a little bit of of issues because the hotel wasn't completely finished and ready um uh, but but it was it was really nice um i thought it was a great event and the showing from south carolina was strong um we had david jenkins there uh, kind of leading from 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 their perspective and uh, overall, I think it was the content was good, the camaraderie was good. Uh, we had a really excellent um, silent auction and some cool, really cool items. It, that was it was an awesome event. Um, and so George Morris had put in the in the chat that you know that would be great to do again. I agree. Um, and and you know I think that if if others agree that it would be a good idea to start reaching out to them now sooner than later yes to a joint meeting okay, okay. um well i mean we don't have to, to take too much time I, I think we have had some participation in the in the q a um and and so it, what it seems like is that uh fall fall is a good time for for an in-person for potential in-person, potential joint annual meeting with the South Carolina ISC uh, next year. And so um, what we'll do as a board moving forward is take your feedback about that and we will begin to look outwards and reach out to South Carolina ISC um, and, and start to plan. So, um, yeah, that's exciting. Thanks for, for your input, everyone. Um, so moving right along, and we're making good time. I think we're gonna have a, a decent break. Um, probably to the crux of, of today's business meeting, uh, we've got some, some a lot of changeover going on uh, in the officer positions 
at IPSI. We've all, a lot of us have been serving for quite some time um, in, our, in our current positions, and uh, it is time to pass the torch along. And so <clears throat> the way that our organization is structured is that the um, president is, after a, after a two-year term, which has been longer than that now, but um, after a two-year term, the president is replaced uh, by the vice president. Um, the vice president is then an open uh, open position for re-election. Um, and so th those are the, that's the kind of slide that happens. I will move into kind of past president pres at large, um, you know, in the community. Um, and, and, and then we've got, as I mentioned, um, we've got a secretary position and a, and a treasurer position that, that were also open. Now, in our last uh, board meeting before this uh, symposium, we had some good discussions and we had some people step up um, to into some of these positions, and I'm very grateful for that. I think we've um, so so Andrew Gay, current vice president, will move into my presidential position. Um, vice president was open, and Perry Sugg, who presented about uh, from the on behalf of the Fig Buttercup subcommittee yesterday, he's going to take the uh, vice president role on. Uh, Margaret Field um, is going to move into the secretary role, and we are very, very grateful for that. And so that just leaves a treasurer position open. And um, I'll say I, it would be wonderful if there was a volunteer out there who would who would um, like to step up to the plate and and take on a two year tenure uh, as treasurer. Um, I, I don't want to speak for Jonathan, so I was briefly going to give him a moment and see if he wants to, to just mention kind of the typical um, obligation that, that he experiences on a monthly basis and, and kind of what, what that position might entail. Because it's our organization, as I said earlier, it's, it's kind of bare bones. We don't, um, we don't have, we're not a big juggernaut fundraiser. And so the finances are, at a glance um, seem much simpler than other nonprofit organizations that I've um, been involved with. So, uh, but again, I, I don't want to speak out of turn. So Jonathan, um, if you, if you would, you want to give just a little, um, rundown of kind of what your responsibilities look like as treasurer and what someone could expect. Yeah. Uh, as far as treasurer responsibilities, all the officer responsibilities are on our website that spell out what the officers do, but kind of the gist of the treasurer is um, we've got separate accounts. We have a PayPal account and a uh, a banking account, a checking and a money market account that you have to uh, monitor and just keep up with, you know, with expenditures and different things and when projects like we're going to discuss later with the fig buttercup you have to pay the intern and various other supplies and stuff like that and overall it's it gets busy at times and other times there's not a whole lot to it awesome um so i guess right now um, I, you know, it's, it's the one other good, really good benefit of, um, having an in-person meeting is when it comes time to, um, talk about these things and, and um, people to step up the plate in-person pressure is a lot stronger than virtual pressure. And so I, I can't, I can't see all of your faces and, and, and give you the, 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 um, solemn, fair and, and see back, but, you know, it, it really is um, something that is really important and integral to our organization. We, we have to have a treasurer, um, and, and as Jonathan said, you know, the, the duties of the treasurer here are, are relatively simple, um, and, you know, whereas we had been operating and dealing with nonprofit status, or we had not been dealing with it because we had been under the umbrella. And I think now that Jonathan in his, at the end of his tenure here has established control 
uh, of that process, you know, whoever has the reins moving forward will, it'll be like starting fresh. And so you won't have to inherit um, much, much knowledge. Um, you'll be kind of working uh, from face value. So again, I, I can't, it's hard to put pressure on people and I don't want to, I guess I don't want to call it pressure because it's something that we would, we really would want some, someone to, to take on, um, you know, forcing a role on somebody uh, can, can sometimes lead to, you know, just difficulties with those people meeting their responsibilities. And so um, we'd love to have someone volunteer. And, and if we can't, then Jonathan and, and the board and I spoke and we agree that it's something that can be tabled for, from this meeting, but we, we would really like to not do that. Um, so, um, is there anyone out there who's interested in, in being our treasurer? Anyone who's got time in their schedule? Owen, um, I have a question yes. about it. If you would. So there seems to be, um, a little bit, well, there's, there's the outstanding nonprofit status that has to be completed, um, you know, run that course. And so, um, that's. That would still be outstanding until that's completed, right? And, Correct. And then the second thing is, um, with that, um, another duty for the treasurer and the board, I suppose, would be to to um, file the regular paperwork that you'd have to do to keep the nonprofit status. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I, I know it's it's, a, it's at least a minimum thing. Is that correct? Yes, and and Jonathan, I, I guess you could you could maybe step in and speak, but I think I believe that essentially the process involves it's like filling out a, a pretty simple report that that detail it requires details on financials. But Jonathan, is that is that what the easy form is like? Uh, based on what I understand, we just have to fill out a form. Um, it's 990 and I believe it's an IRS form that just details what um, what happened that year for your organization and you just submit it to them. And I think now it's even electronically sent. So, um, but yeah, I'll, that's what I have gathered. And that's been the other thing as far as this organization, we've had to learn how, what, what is required of us and um, and what what we need to do because nobody has um, told us really what needs to happen. So it's been a learning process. That's a good point. Um, yeah, we've ha had to do a lot of figuring it out. Jonathan has had to do a lot of figuring figuring it out um, on this. So, but Perry, to get back to your original question, yes, that it will be. You know, there is the regular treasury responsibilities associated with the workings of the organization and then uh, an annual um, online submittal form that details the financial aspects of the past fiscal year. And so there, there, is, there is that maintenance responsibility for the nonprofit status. Um, you're right. But from what I understand, what we understand, it's, it's uh, relatively simple, especially with the way that our finances operate. And Jonathan, remind us all again how long you you set as current as treasurer. Uh, the term is two years, like you said. I've been in the position for five years. Right. I just want to kind of underline that Jonathan's been kind enough to um, continue his role uh, through all of the ups and downs of the past few years, but but even before then. So, um, again, you know, we don't. He's done a wonderful job and he deserves to <laughs> to have a, a break from the position. And um, so uh, it doesn't seem like we're, we're having much um, volunteerism right now. And, and so I think what we will probably have to do is, um, is table this until our next board meeting, uh, official board meeting. Um, and because we've had 
at our last board meeting, we discussed it. And I mean, all of us who are on the core board now have served as an officer in some way, shape, or form in the past. And so while it would be easy for us to just, uh, you know, renew our service, um, it's also great to have new blood and, you know, new ideas and new people um, in the organization as officers. And so, and I think that it, we, we can table it for now, but we will definitely be, um, be looking strongly for uh, someone to fill that role because um, I, I I really appreciate what Jonathan's done and I I for one know that he he deserves uh, some relief from it and and five years is an excellent excellent stance uh, stint um, as treasurer and so let's let's table for now um, as much as I'd like to see someone volunteer I cannot force you so we will um, talk about it at next board meeting. And um, and I guess I'll I can now we can kind of uh, say thank you to Margaret and Perry and Andrew for assuming those those officer roles moving forward. Uh, we, we appreciate your you stepping into those positions. Um, so our next item of business that is uh, of importance is our Fig Buttercup subcommittee and the work that they've been doing to um, renew the internship that we had last year that was very effective and, and um, built an excellent foundation for for the coming years. Uh, they've, um, at the last board meeting, we had uh, discussions about um, fin financial requests that would be coming down the pipe from them. They had talked about some some avenues that they would like to pursue as a subcommittee and ways that they could make an impact uh, early next year. And um, so it kind of boiled down to uh, two items. Um, essentially, they, they would like, the, sub, the subcommittee has requested approval to from the board to fund both uh, an internship for Ficaria Verna um, for 2022 similar to the one that we had with ML Rash last year that, that Perry presented about um, just building on what we established last year and delving further into inventory of monitoring, control, outreach, um, you know, that we, it was really effective what we did last year. And so um, that I think their ask is, is very legitimate there. Uh, the cost um, would be a, not, it would not exceed $4,500. Um, and and I, the amount of time that we, that allowed for Emma to work with us um, during this past internship period was sufficient. And, and honestly, I think we got really good products and results out of it. So, um, you know, they're asking to, to, for us to fund that position again. Uh, they're also asking for, um, for $3,600 to uh, run like full page premium ads, uh, public service announcement type ads in the Triangle Garden which is a, uh, a well-circulated publication in the Triangle area of North Carolina, um, which is also consequently where we are focusing our efforts on take buttercup uh, eradic eradication. And so uh, they are wanting to run um, some really nice large ads for uh, the January, February, and March, April editions um, just to get the, get People, give people a visual reference, introduce them to the ideas uh, and the concepts about the, uh, and the invasion biology of fig buttercup, and then providing with, with an outlet to learn more. And so, um, so that, that effort, it's not cheap to run ads uh, from what we found. And so they're, they're requesting um, uh, additional $3,600. And so what I do know is that um, we, as an organization, we do have the funds in our in our account to fund this, and I think we are we as a board are in support of this. Um, the proposal from uh, Perry it, it also includes um, a, a a promise of sorts, um, you know. So that what, whereas they know that we can fund this entirely and outright, we are also going they're also going to be working to try and um, do fundraising to cover up to fifty percent of the cost of this. 
And so I, I think that's the biggest point that we were trying to make here in the business meeting is that, um, you know, we would, we're asking for, um, for donations, we're asking for uh, information from you guys on potential outlets for requesting donations, fundraising, um, you know, these these two items, I think, will be extremely impactful in our campaign against Big Buttercup um, in the coming year. And, I, you know, I'm in full support of, of funding them. Um, and so this is something that we wanted to bring to the business meeting and show you guys and um, and and talk about it. And so I, I would I would just see if anyone has any questions about the ask. Uh, if they are, if they have any comments they'd like to make, um, please put them in the Q and A, um, and we can discuss them. Hey Owen, also I want to add that um, that uh, you know that total number obviously is is quite a big chunk of our our existing funds, and so the um, so so the donation support part in soliciting requests for more funds from outside sources is is a big part of it but um as far as uh how much and when the for the ad um what we would need initially is uh, we're really committing to the first issue um in december that's when we have to have the funds for that so it's basically half of that 3600 um the the second part of that payment on the 3600 wouldn't be until uh feb mid february um and then um so but we're not committed to it unless we have the funds so we're anticipating and we hope that we will because that's that's prime time to coincide with when big buttercup is is out and about and people will you know make the connection between the ad and what they see out in the yards and down the creek and stuff like that um and the um the internship also um you know we'd have to have those funds if we were going to have a contract in by mid late december with somebody to start in january thanks for for underlining those details perry um yeah and and i think um at, at our at our last board discussion when we talked about it you know we we um, I think we just want to uh, make sure that we're making, we do have the funds to, to fund both these endeavors, um, but we also want to make sure that, that we can ha have a decent fundraising effort to recuperate. And so um, I think it was just important to, to, to put this out there in the open and I, we're, we'll have a slide up and um, we'll also be bringing this uh, to the next official board meeting. Um, and so we will, you know, we'll be, we'll be talking about it more, but Perry, I think, and I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the point you're making is that, you know, it'd be great to simultaneously fund these endeavors now, but also begin fundraising to recuperate. Is that what you were saying? I think that would have to be the case. Um, we either commit to, you know, um, but we would. Uh, what I'm saying is, the second half, if we if we fell short for some reason, the second um, issue, we would have to drop that. The second issue is a half, which would be eighteen hundred dollars. So I, I guess we were we absolutely need um, a commitment for three quarters of those funds now in order to get the ball rolling on the ad and the internship. And then we would be um, we would have we would be able to cover at least that. Um, gotcha. And and we would uh, you know at the same time start soliciting funds specifically for those special projects from from outside sources, whether it's uh, sponsorships for the um, for the internship or direct direct donations to support the ad from particularly from the triangle area um uh you know organizations you know the chip in because basically that ad is going to funnel 
uh, the information and contacts directly to them as to support their efforts to uh, their individual efforts to um, address Big Buttercup, like you know, say in Wake County, you know, Rivers, you know, has their own little thing. Uh, Duke is doing their stuff, and Equa's doing their stuff, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. And we're, you know, we're doing this well. That's it. Great. So, um, I, so what I think we should do is, you know, this has been the way I think it should flow is that we this has been introduced, this ask has been introduced. I think that um, uh, we will bring it to a vote at the next board meeting, um, but but we wanted to make sure the information was available for everyone um, and it's clearly laid out. So what I can do is distribute um, the PDF that the subcommittee generated for the official ask. I kind of ripped from that and put it on my slide. All of it would not fit on one slide. I didn't just want to bombard you guys with much text. So um, I can distribute that to the to the group um, so y'all can all have you know information um, to look at and digest. Before the next board meeting, and then we'll 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 put it to official vote to uh, fund uh, seventy five percent of the cost, so that um, we can uh, make take action, um, hire an intern, and get all the ad stuff in place uh, for the twenty twenty two growing season of Big Buttercup. All right. Uh, when is the next board meeting? All right, that's a good question. I'm only asking because there are deadlines for um, actually get, you know, before we can move on this. The, um, next, the next board meeting is the 29th of this month. Oh, I'm sorry, it looks like, I'm sorry, it's the 30th. Okay. Will that meet your deadlines? Or, I mean, if we have a vote before then and-, and Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, yeah, for those of you who are new, um, board meetings occur on the, on the, they've kind of fluctuated, um, you know, through, through COVID, they've kind of been pushed or changed, but generally we'd like to have them on the last Tuesday of, uh, each month from 10 o'clock to noon, give people a chance to, we used to have them from like 11 to one. And then, you know, when we did have kind of gatherings of people who would get together and, and kind of zoom in from one camera to the meetings. You know, to share lunch together, but um, I think we we shifted it to all occur before lunch, and so it it, it seems to have been streamlined things a little bit. Um, so yes, our next board meeting is on is Tuesday, uh, November thirtieth, uh, from ten o'clock to noon, and we will definitely be have at least one voting item on funding these Vicaria Verna S. All right. So let me share this one more time. Um, oh, it's the wrong one, of course. Uh, hang on two seconds. Oh. So back to the agenda. Um, so we've talked about all these things. We have tabled. Uh, the position of treasurer until um, to, to discuss that next board meeting or hopefully to, to get someone voted in at next board meeting. Um, we now have an opportunity to discuss uh, um, any new or other business that um, folks in the audience would like to discuss. And so I put it out there now, if you've got something that you'd like to bring up for the business meeting, uh, for discussion, uh, between now and the next board meeting, uh, you've got an opportunity now to to put it in the Q and A, or if, if you're a panelist and you have something you'd like to say, you're welcome to speak up. Um, we we'd like to hear from from anybody who who has anything that they're interested in, or any any new business they think we need to discuss. How can we speak up? Hmm. That's Johnny. Um. Johnny, I, I'm not sure. Ben, I, do we have the ability to, to, we don't have the ability to allow non-panelists to speak, do we? Um, let me try it. Who, Johnny? 
Johnny Randall would like to would like to speak. Johnny Randall. Can you try it, Johnny? Okay, how's that? Perfect. I hear you. Okay, great. You can't see me, but that's that's just fine. Um, so I just wanted to uh, comment on the last item um, with respect to the internship. Um, there is there are donations coming in specifically for an <clears throat> Prince's Memorial, and these are to be dedicated to Vicaria Verna. And so right now there is probably um, I'm going to guess around five hundred dollars. Uh, now that can go directly and is earmarked for that internship. And hopefully we can, um, we'll get more than that. So that's all I have to say. Great, Johnny. Thanks for making that point. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, we, we, we did set that up. I, I, I remember that now. I mean, and was, as I said yesterday, played such an integral role in our Vicaria Verna efforts. Um, that, you know, we, we felt like that was only appropriate to do, to put donations in her name towards the, the battle that she was fighting. So, um, that's great to hear that there's already, um, funds earmarked, uh, sitting there and, and that hopefully we can, um, continue to, to drum that up. Johnny, I appreciate you, Darren. Does anybody else have any business to bring up? Anything they'd like to say? Okay, so um, what I will do now is, I guess, you know, before we adjourn this business meeting, um, I, I, or after we adjourn this business meeting, uh, Drew Gay will be your new president. Uh, Perry will be the new vice president. Margaret will be the new secretary, and we still have a treasury position open. And so, um, I think I just want to say briefly that uh, it, it's been quite an experience um, leading North Carolina IPSI these past years. Um, you know, I've I've met some wonderful people, um, been exposed to some really interesting information, um, seen a lot of amazing collaboration um, between many different interest groups. Um, I get to, you know, see the people's individual passions come alive at the board meetings um, when they bring, bring things to discuss. It's, it's been a really wonderful experience and um, I've appreciated every moment of it. It hasn't been easy at times and especially these past few years with COVID, um, you know, just trying to, to juggle life and work and it's the it's you know it's it's been a challenge but but like i said i think together with the support of other board members during my tenure um it, it's we've been resilient and it's been a great experience so um so thanks everyone and um i guess one last reminder uh from here on out i think drew will be moderating the session and so remember that uh chat Remember the form in the chat for CEUs, um, and and I think Drew will continue to remind you throughout. And um, and yes, thank you all so much for for uh, participating in the business meeting. Um, we've got some excellent presentations coming up, and uh, so stick around. Thanks, folks. Oh, and one thing I want to say real quick is the um, talking with Ben this morning. That we had a few questions about the recordings. Ben is going to send me. He sent me the recording link for yesterday, and then after this meeting, he'll send me the link for today. So I will email those out probably later today or by the end of the week to uh, all the all the participants. So you should get access to the recordings. I just want to say that before we break. Thanks for making that point, Jonathan. I'm sure there was going to be some people uh, asking. So. Um... Great, we'll, we'll, we'll give you access, don't worry. Um, all right, folks, we're gonna take a little break and um, and I think we will begin again at
uh, 10 o'clock with uh, uh, Dr. Travis Gannon and uh, discussions about glyphosate. So grab a cup of coffee, uh, take a break, and we'll see you back then. Thank you, Owen.